Join Mondo's Elite Notification Squad today to help keep me out of a job in data entry. Authors and artists work really hard on their stuff, so please support them using the links below. Years ago, this fantastic tale began with a thrilling mystery and a fate of encounter. After defeating the mighty Omega Shenron, Goku and the Eternal Dragon departed from Earth. At long last, the planet could enjoy a time of peace and harmony. About 100 years have passed since Goku's departure. And with the Dragon Balls restored, a new story is about to begin. Hercule City We arrive at Orange Star High School where a descendant of Goku appears to be attending with someone who looks a lot like Arale. Upon being tapped on the shoulder, we meet Chico, Goku Jr.'s classmate. She greets him with a good morning as he stutters to return the hello. Chico then asks if he's seen the new movie Battle of Gods yet, but he hasn't. Noting the coincidence, she decides they can watch it together after school as she hasn't either. The sulking in the background are Goku's former bullies. Complaining, Puck says that being the runner-up in the World Martial Arts Tournament has made Goku so popular. Trying to regain some personal confidence, one of them chimes in with, well, at least he'll never know how to deal with the ladies, with the other telling Puck to teach him a lesson. But now a bit more humble than prior to the hero's legacy OVA, Puck admits that Goku would knock him out with a single punch. In the classroom, we see a few familiar faces in attendance, or at least possible descendants of those familiar faces. The teacher is giving a lecture on a man named Rico of Rosai, a young, erudite man with a profound love of knowledge. While she goes on, Goku senses multiple strange energies. Arale thinks to herself that something must be up with him today. Goku's hunch proves correct as a space pod enters Earth's atmosphere. Meanwhile, it's lunchtime at Orange Star High. Linry, another one of Goku's classmates, and who pretty much looks like Krillin with a nose, also notices that there's something off about Goku, pointing out that normally he eats 10 times the amount that he has. Goku just says that he has a bad feeling, but Linry argues that he says weird stuff like that all the time. Just then, someone announces over the PA system. Emergency report! There is a magnitude 5 earthquake at East City around 10 a.m. The focus in the outskirts of East City. According to local witnesses, an unidentified flying object was also spotted around the area at the same time. More details to come as the situation is still under investigation. Everyone in the cafeteria makes their own ill-informed assumptions and theories, as Linry asks Goku if he's a fortune teller or something, who continues to sense out the mysterious key. Before saying aloud, he thinks the key is something different than what he already knows, which causes his friend to recant, saying, never mind, you are a pretty strange guy. Three hours later, at Kame House, Master Roshi gazes towards the sky, appearing to sense the same thing as Goku. In a capsule core, Vegeta Jr. does as well, as does his mother, Pan... Panties. His mother's name is Panties. At the landing site, a voice announces, Lord Raputo, we've successfully landed on Earth. As the hatch opens, a slew of soldiers step out. At the lookout, Dende can be seen with Popo, both appearing to be very nervous, as a Saiyan-looking warrior emerges from the ship. So... This is planet Earth. Not a bad little planet. It seems that little girl Pokora has arrived as well. Y yes, my lord. Now's not the time to deal with her. The bell rings at school as all the kids begin to go home for the day. But at the Sun household, Pan is startled by a presence. The Saiyan invader. Asking who they are, he only says, So, I finally found you. Demanding to know what they want, the Saiyan tells her to relax. Just a small favor. First, you see that Dragon Ball over there? It now belongs to me. <laughs> Telling the thief over her dead body, the villain admits, coincidentally enough, that's the second thing he wants. <laughs> Though miles away, Goku can sense something terrible has happened. Out in the city with Chico, she asks him what's wrong. He can only reiterate his bad feeling. Picking up the umbrella, she tells Goku he'll catch a cold out here standing in the rain like that. Apologizing, he asks if she would mind walking herself home. But she has her reservations against this, taking offense in Goku running off and just leaving her in the rain, then demanding to know if there's something more important to him than being out on a date with her. Not knowing how to explain the situation, Goku does know he has no time to waste. Sensing his grandmother dying, he dashes away, calling for the flying Nimbus. Taking flight, Shiko stands alone, wondering what's wrong with him. Arriving in his neighborhood, he finds his house destroyed and Pan lying motionless in the street, begging her to wake up. It seems she has left this world. As the young warrior grieves, he senses a malevolent force from behind. The soldiers ask Goku if he's ready to join her, but no mood for conversation, he lunges after the gang. Sneaking up on Goku, the Saiyan puts him down. 
As the rain continues to pour from the sky, what will become of Goku Jr. and the others? The next day, after the invaders manage to take Goku out of commission, they continue their search for the Dragon Balls. Finding one in a bird's nest, they believe they're sure to get a fine reward. Just as they're ready to head back, someone shouts out to him asking, where do you think you're going? Recognizing the voice, they turn around to find Pakora, the female warrior they were talking about earlier. Telling her long time no see, she commands that they just hand her the Dragon Ball and they're free to go, pushing that she'd really rather not use violence. Don't get ahead of yourself. It's time we finish you off. What? Ugh. Hold this. I'll end this myself. Yeah. With his comrades fallen, the lone remaining soldier knows he cannot win. Pakora suggests he just hand the ball over. Just as he warns not to underestimate him, Pakora takes her stance, causing him to drop to his knees, begging her to spare his life, much to her confusion. Meanwhile, it looks like the invaders thought Goku was as good as dead. As he comes to, he wonders who attacked him from behind. Then, he spots what they've done to the city. It's completely destroyed. He breaks into tears as two hours pass. He buries his grandmother and vows to collect the Dragon Balls to wish her back. Unable to find the Four Star Ball, he assumes that's what the villains came for. Sensing out their energy, he readies himself for another battle. Hopping aboard the Nimbus, he takes off. Simultaneously, the soldiers excavate in the middle of a wasteland. A new soldier scolds them, asking how they still haven't found the ball yet. The group apologizes for their incompetence, as we're introduced to Sodayam, one of Raputo's henchmen, who continues with, If we keep moving at this pace, Lord Raputo will not be pleased. The lone soldier comes running up, shouting that they're in trouble. Inquiring to what he means, the soldier explains that he found the Dragon Ball, but ran into that Pokora girl and they were no match for her. What? Word that she could cause trouble. He uses a strange power to look in on her. It becomes apparent Pokora has meddled in their plans before, so Diam swears he'll tear her apart this time. Then, unexpectedly, Goku appears on the image, noting his power is close to Pakora's, and he's heading in their direction at a high speed, resolving to report the situation to Lord Raputo himself. Three hours later, Goku continues his journey on the Nimbus. Spotting an explosion in the distance, he wonders what's going on. Up ahead, the soldiers are destroying yet another city. A couple of kids take cover that looks strikingly similar to Beat and Note from Dragon Ball Heroes, but the soldier finds them, blowing the building to bits, smugly asking if they really thought they'd be able to hide from him. Goku sends him flying, alerting his comrade, saying, How dare you threaten the lives of all these innocent people? Before also asking who they are and what they're doing here. Terrified, the other soldier pleads for Goku to spare him, as they are only following Lord Pakora's orders, obviously trying to trick Goku. He then continues to beg for his life. Inquiring to who Pakora is, the soldier stutters to explain. Goku assures them if they tell the truth, he'll let them go. Describing Pakora as a teenage girl with the voice of a child, he warns Goku not to be fooled by her appearance. She's a cold-hearted, ruthless warrior that kills people like flies. Even saying she's the one that took his Dragon Ball yesterday, angering Goku. Sensing a strong energy not too far away, he decides this must be her. Calling on the Nimbus, he rushes after her. One of the soldiers laughs at how easy it was to fool him. The other not so happy though, having been the one to take the beating in the middle of an open plain. Having no luck in her search, Pakora decides it might be best just to head back to her ship and get some rest. When Goku shouts, I found you! Quickly approaching, she asks the young warrior who he is. Recognizing her voice, Goku asks if she's Pakora. Wondering how he knows her name, Goku dismounts the Nimbus, bowing to beat her down and reclaim his Dragon Ball. In the confusion, Pakora's just aggravated they sent another grunt to take the ball from her. She tells Goku she'd really rather not beat up a child. Powering up, he decides to immediately go Super Saiyan, to the astonishment of Pakora finding a Saiyan here. Catching herself before she hits the ground, she realizes Goku isn't fooling around, thinking, but when did he have a child? I can't believe it, knowing she must be very careful in this fight. Before the dust can even clear, Goku already knows he missed her. As she emerges, Pakora thinks to herself, this is getting dangerous, he almost killed me. As it looks like Pakora has had enough of this little skirmish, Goku charges another Kamehameha and promises that this time he won't miss. As he goes to do so, another blast comes from behind. With no time to dodge it, it lands a direct hit on Pakora. Wondering what's going on, Goku turns to find Sadayam. He thanks Goku, saying if not for him, things wouldn't have gone so smooth. But I'll take it from here. Scram, brat! 
As the sixth star ball falls from Pakora's vest, Sadayan picks it up, thinking this was all too easy. As Goku tries to get a look to see if it's his ball or not, regardless, he yells for him to give it back. Oh! I told you to get lost, kid. With Goku's admins, Sadayan lets him know he'll deal with him in a minute, just as soon as he does this girl. As the mountain collapses around her, she's down but still alive. Hm, still alive? What's the matter? I thought you were the mighty Pakora. Pakora demands he let her go, but he has other things in mind, telling her it's time for her to face her death penalty, creating a bed of spikes and getting Goku's attention. Goodbye! Being the pure-hearted kid he is, Goku rushes to save her, but Sadayam isn't about to let that happen, telling Goku he wanted to spare his life in return for his help, but since he's so eager to die, he can join her. Not knowing what else to do, Goku knows he only has one option, calling on the Nimbus just before she hits the spikes. Cutting away, we're taken to Capsule Core, where it looks like they've had a few rude intruders of their own. Both Vegeta and Panties are in their Super Saiyan forms. They power down. Panties saying it was way too easy for them to win that fight, believing this may only be the beginning. Back at the fight with Sadayam, Bakura lies comfortably as the Nimbus was able to make it in time to save her, leaving her to wonder what's going on, but also proving to Goku that she's pure of heart. What? Goku is finally able to breathe a sigh of relief. He tells Pakora he's sorry for attacking her, admitting he should have cleared everything up first. When she yells for Goku to look out! Taking the sucker punch like a champ, Goku gets back up, eyeing down his now definitive enemy. Also now understanding it was Sadayam and his men who killed his grandmother and stole his Dragon Ball, then manipulated him into fighting Pakora. Laughing at the fact that Goku has finally caught on, he tells the young Saiyan that since he's no longer of use to him, he will have to die. General Sadayam, please leave this to us. At least eight grunts arrive in the background. One of them snickers. <laughs> we meet again. Asking you again, Goku warns them it's not too late to turn around. But they quickly show they have no intentions of doing so. Calling on the power pole, Goku is able to easily keep the lower level warriors back. As Goku dodges, it seems he's fallen right into Sadayam's trap as the Key Blast turns back around. Pakora shouts for Goku to look out, but it's too late. <laughs> How do you like that? Unable to move, all Pakora can do is call him an idiot for falling for such a trick. Mocking him, Sadayam asks Goku, What's wrong? Where's all that enthusiasm you just had? As Goku takes a beating, Pakora can only look on in horror, not having the energy to help. Your power is pathetic, even as a Super Saiyan! Summoning the last of her strength, Pakora is able to get in a sneak attack, but far from finishes the invader. Furious, the general lets her know that since she's so anxious to die, he'd be happy to accommodate. With that last attack leaving her completely vulnerable, Goku knows he has to do something. No one can save you now! As the warrior braces herself, Goku shouts for him to stop, intriguing Sadayam. Looking back at Goku, he averts his blast, firing point blank at him. Surprisingly, Goku comes out unscathed, even free from Zadayam's binding attack. Pakora reasons that he was able to control the energy that held him and used it to offset the blast. Done with this nonsense, Goku declares this fight over. Don't, Don't even, even think, think about, about it. it! Noting his power and the obvious misunderstanding, Pakora can only hope she and the boy can be friends after all of this is done. As Goku Jr. disappears from sight, Sadayam turns to find him charging a Kamehameha. With the original Goku helping in spirit, he pleads for him to hold the attack, but Goku Jr. fires. At the landing site of the invaders, a soldier reports that General Sadayam's energy signal has completely vanished. General Magnesi's team, assigned to District 29, has been lost as well. I see. So, there's plenty of resistance to have some skill. Yes, as a result, we lost those two Dragon Balls. Raputo's Saiyan blood boils as he finds the situation interesting. Maybe he'll have more fun on this planet than he thought after all. Upon finally getting a look at the Dragon Ball, Goku finds it has five stars. Unfortunately, not the one he was immediately looking for. Pakora asks if he plans to take it from her by force, but Goku lets her know that he has no desire to fight anymore. But soon enough, that ball will be important to his plans. Getting a little bossy, she passive-aggressively asks Goku what his plan with the Dragon Balls even is, also taking this opportunity to ask his name. Introducing himself properly, he explains the situation, causing her to ask how Raputo could do such horrible things. Goku asks who Raputo is, 
coming to a surprise to Pakora. She tells him he's the boss of all these soldier guys. Going into detail, he's unbelievably strong and heartless. Goku had mentioned that someone knocked him out with a single punch. Only Raputo has that kind of strength. He's also a Saiyan, and able to use that golden hair form just like Goku. Having heard this, Goku loses all confidence in his ability to take him on. If he was able to knock him out without even going Super Saiyan, that's not good news. But in return for saving her life, Pakora offers her assistance, also rationalizing that she has no chance stopping him solo anyway. When Goku's stomach randomly begins to gurgle, embarrassed, he announces that he hasn't eaten in a while and if she wouldn't mind grabbing some lunch before anything else. Slightly taken aback, she agrees. In the city, Goku is seen smashing bowl after bowl, just like his ancestor. Even more taken aback, Pakora can only look on in amazement, before the boy happily spouts out, Ah, I'm full. So, Miss Pakora, what's your story? Huh? My story? Yeah, what's the story between you and that Raputo guy? And how do you know about the Dragon Balls if you don't mind me asking? Agreeing to explain, she also lets Goku know it's not something she likes talking about. When she was little, her home planet was eradicated by Raputo. As Raputo takes on the young Pakora, he says killing her would be a waste. So, she'll instead be his imprisoned sparring partner. He forced her to train so he could continue enjoying their matches. Understanding a little more, Goku thinks that maybe that's the reason he didn't kill him earlier. He was just toying with him. Asking her to continue, she goes on to say that she finally managed to escape their control. But all she could do is keep running and wait for an opportunity to attack. One day, she heard from the soldiers that Raputo planned to come to planet Earth to collect the Dragon Balls, which can grant any wish when you gather all seven. So she decided to head here herself to find them before Raputo arrived, pointing out that task is much easier said than done. But notes with Goku's help, it may actually be possible after all causing Goku to promise to do his best. As he ushers the waitress over for another serving, Pakora, regaining her seat, jokes that maybe all this eating is the source of his power. In the middle of a wasteland, Raputo's men lie scattered. It seems though there is at least one survivor, the one who was also beaten up by Goku back in the city. Between Pakora and this new brat, he knows he's lucky to be alive. Taking off his helmet, he goes to get back to Raputo's ship. Somewhere on planet Earth. Okay, now that we've killed all of them, Unfortunately, the seemingly only survivor is picked up by one of the scouters. Stepping over to the scared young girl, she shouts out for help as she begins to run away. But it's no use. They mercilessly kill her. As she lies dead, one of the soldiers announces with her mission complete, it's time to head back to report. As everyone goes to leave, the leader notices a straggler. Asking what he's doing, he asks the others that they notice that the dark energy surrounding the area just became stronger. It almost seems like it comes from the other world. Cockily replying, yeah, that's right. This place is full of dead souls. And who do you think killed them, idiot? As something gets the straggler's attention, he asks, Who are you? Before we spot an eerie entity, and the entire area explodes. Back with Goku, Pakora laughs that initially she thought Goku was Raputo's child. But Goku doesn't think that's very possible. Getting a little more sassy, she goes on to ask Goku why he initially thought she was the enemy. Nervously, Goku assures her that it was the doing of those henchmen. Speaking of which, the both of them catch that same soldier flying by. Everyone a bit astonished at the luck. Caught in the headlights, all the soldier can do is say, Uh, nice day, huh? Moments later, they have the man tied up as Goku positively identifies him as the guy who misled him, who curses his own fate. Intimidating him, Pakora says, Oh, so you're the one who's caused me so much trouble. Time for a little payback. Causing the man to cry out, saying anything to save his own skin. Demanding to know where the remaining Dragon Balls are, the soldier swears he has no idea. Annoyed, Pakora calls him useless. But not willing to just let him go, she asks Goku what that place was called that they're taking him, Master Roshi's house. Asking who that is, Goku explains that he was a martial arts teacher for himself, his grandma, and even his ancestor, but warns Pakora to be careful around him. With their POW strapped to the cloud, they quickly arrive at Kame House. Getting nostalgic, Roshi reminisces about the first time the original Goku arrived as well, then noticing the thing hanging off the back of the cloud. Greeting each other, Roshi asks who this girl is, who offers a more than formal introduction. Roshi thinks intensely for a moment, before reverting back to his perverted nature, calling her a peachy peachy gal, which from what I understand, pretty much means he wants to motorboat her. Cringing at Roshi's mannerisms, the pervy old man goes to move in, but Goku jumps in the way, explaining why they've come to his island. Shocked that Pan has been murdered, he asks if they know the invader's intentions, but it's still unclear outside of them wanting the Dragon Balls. Remembering they have a prisoner, Pakora asks what Raputo's wish might be, but again, he claims ignorance. Having proven useless once again, she winks at Goku asking if they'd just like to finish him off now, who joyfully agrees, exaggerating by swinging his arms. With Goku 
Goku asking if he's ready. Scaring him into submission, the soldier promises to tell them everything. With everyone's attention, he says he obtained the following information from the others. Raputo is going to wish his father, Corifero, back to life. If this wish is granted, there will be no one in the universe that will be able to stand up to their power. While this gets Roshi's curiosity, Pakora thinks he's lying. The Turtle Master appearing to still be in deep thought while the two squabble in the background. Finally, Goku asks him what's up questioning his student if he remembers Pan mentioning the name Broly, but the name doesn't register, explaining, Broly is the legendary Super Saiyan his ancestor Goku managed to defeat long ago. Roshi himself was also in that battle, kinda. Pakora just baffles at the thought that Goku's ancestor is also named Goku. Broly revived several times, but was eventually destroyed for good. The Z Fighters thought they had nothing to worry about, but when Goku, Trunks, and Pan went to the galaxy to search for the Black Star Dragon Balls, they battled someone who called himself Broly's son and his name was Corifero. And on that cliffhanger is where this fan manga comes to an end. So if you'd like to see more, please let the author know using the links in the description. For what I understand, he's most active on Twitter. This is way too good of a story for it to just come to an end like this after eight chapters. And I personally would love to see more. But you guys take care. Thank you for being part of this community and I will catch you next time.